Okay, it looks like we got most of our folks in. It's wonderful to see some familiar names um, for our call today. My name is Julie Tyndall, and I am the Community Outreach Manager here at the City of Orlando in the Office of Community Affairs. I manage the city's community investment program from beginning to end. So I'll be your main point of contact um, through this process, whether it's answering questions, providing any technical assistance with the grant application, um, with the online portal, um, you know, with questions that you have um, just about even how to interpret a question or complete your budget, um, I will be available to help. Um, so we have a lot of folks on the call today. Um, if And so I'm not gonna do one-on-one -on -one introductions, um, but if you do just wanna type your name in the chat screen and provide your name um, and the organization that you represent, um, just so our other guests can have an idea of who's represented on the call um, and maybe connect some names with some organizations. So um, what I'm going to do, I made this a meeting um, because previously we've done webinars and um, those are great, but it's hard for folks to ask questions. And I want this to be more of a discussion um, where you can actually ask questions, not just in the chat bar. Um, so feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions um, and we'll be happy to, to answer those um, as we go along. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly share my screen. Uh, I'm gonna take you to our main website for the Community Investment Program. And on this, um, I hope that you've been to this website already, um, but you can find it very easily by typing orlando.gov forward slash CIP into your browser bar, um, but we'll share it um, on the screen today. So, um, Demetrius, can you see that on your screen? Is that nod? Okay, thank you. Um, so um, I know if you've been to this before, you see that we have five different focus areas that we're still looking to find. I'm going to briefly go through those because we did um, kind of tighten some of those up a little bit. Um, so we still have um, the housing focus services for individuals experiencing homelessness. And again, really what we're trying to look at here is innovative approaches um, to addressing homelessness. Um, we'd also like to let some more folks in. Um, basically try to provide some gap funding for some of the organizations that are providing services for homeless individuals. Uh, and Sorry, I'm having to stop and let some folks in. Um, as this thing with housing search um, and placement, um, providing any case management, job placement services, case management for homeless youth, et cetera. Um, so we have provided a lot of what they call barrier buster um, funding before with the housing first model, um, helping folks who are going into permanent supportive housing have the services support and also physical needs um, of moving into their new residence. Um, so we um, fund a number, a number of different um, programs under that homelessness. We do wanna make sure that you are um, kind of aligning yourself with that housing first model. That is an important initiative and um, something that we do want to make sure anyone receiving funding from the city of Orlando um, is kind of um, buying in to that model. The next focus area is family sustainability. Um, and again, that's supportive services um, that are designed to foster independence or equip families living in the city of Orlando limits who are at risk for not meeting basic human needs. Um, and we wanna give them the skills to live healthy, productive, contributing lives. Um, at this time, we're not considering youth mentoring programs because we do fund that through the Mayor's Matching Grant Program. Um, so if you have any questions or you have a youth-based program that you would like to seek funding for, um, there are funding opportunities through Mayor's Matching Grant and that'll be orlando.gov slash MMG or through our PKZ program. So again, we're looking at some um, 
subsidized childcare, job training, immigration assistance, um, programs for LGBTQ individuals, legal assistance, mental health, um, literacy, technical challenges, building professional competencies, um, transportation programs um, aimed at increasing access to economic opportunities for families. So really we are looking at those real critical needs um, for these programs. So, um, you know, sometimes we get applications of, oh, that's a nice program, <laughs> but it's not necessarily looking at some critical needs. Um, really how I define this focus area is these are the programs that are preventing families from falling off that cliff into homelessness. So how do we stabilize these families, get them back on track um, and so forth. So if, you're, if your program falls in line with that, um, those are the programs that we're looking to support. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have with that. The next focus area is domestic violence, and that's pretty self-explanatory. We're looking primarily for primary prevention initiatives, uh, but we do find um, supportive services for domestic violence programs, um, as well as any activities that are influencing change for individuals, communities, and institutions. Um, for support of seniors, this year we're looking at services that promote or maintain senior independence, create a social environment where all of our seniors who live within the Orlando city limits can live independent, healthy, and productive lives. I always say when you put this one on the boilerplate, it really is keeping our seniors out of the hospital, keeping them out of the nursing home, um, keeping them living as independently um, as possible. Um, even if they're living with family members, maybe you know they're participating in a respite program or something that um, still allows them to live um, among their family members and so forth. So we're looking at nutrition and activities, um, healthy meal programs, active living, social programs, respite and daycare services, health services, transportation programs. And last but not least, this one's my baby, is improving availability, access, and consumption of healthy foods. So as I always say here in the city of Orlando, we do not have a shortage of food, um, but we do have one in four of our families dealing with food insecurity. So really looking to address um, how do we increase access to fresh, healthy, affordable local food. Um, so we're really looking at some comprehensive and innovative approaches to food resourcing within the Orlando city limits. Um, so some of your service examples, again, um, increasing access to healthy food, food preparation classes. We've really identified education as being an important component in this focus area. Um, school food programs, urban agriculture, local foods. Local food is an economic driver to create jobs and grow economies, SNAP outreach, and food delivery programs. Um, and one of the things we added is special consideration will be given to grassroots organizations that are either minority led or serving unrepresented communities to increase equity in our community. Um, so we've included some, some basic steps as far as eligibility. Um, these are pretty standard as far as we only fund 501c3 nonprofit charitable organizations. We do that ask that you've had at least 12 months of operations in place before you apply for this grant. Um, we also ask that you um, are requesting a grant to be used to direct your purpose as an organization um, and that you have clear plans um, of how the community investment program will serve clients who reside within the Orlando city limits. Now, I know that that's always a challenge sometimes too, because people will say, well, I have Orlando in my address. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're within the Orlando city limits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this link um, so we can take a look at that. And does everybody see a map on their screen? Okay. So this is our Orlando locator. Um, and so if we back this up a little bit, you'll see these white areas here are the, the boundaries of the city of Orlando. Um, so we go up north a little bit into the Rosemont area. This is 441. So you have Rosemont, Lake Orlando area. Down, this is John Young Parkway. We go as west as Hiawassee and Kirkman. Um, down to the Sand Lake Road area, actually, um, and a little bit of it. Um, all of downtown and east um, to somewhere on Boulevard. A little bit further over here is the Ventura um, neighborhood area. Uh, this is the airport right here. 
and Lake Nona. So we actually go down to Osceola County um, in that Lake Nona area. So that gives you an idea kind of where the boundaries are. The other thing I like about this tool is that up here in the upper right hand corner, you can enter an address and it will tell you um, where that um, location is, whether it's in the city of Orlando or whether it's in unincorporated Orange County. So I'm entering my address here at City Hall and down below it lets me know that I am within the city of Orlando limits and what commissioner district I'm in as well. Okay. Um, if you are outside, if that address is outside the city limits, it'll say unincorporated Orange County. So we do want to make sure that if you're providing services, um, you are, um, the majority of your participants are city of Orlando residents. Um, our grant funds come from um, our general um, operating budget, which is supported by the tax base. And so we really want these funds to go back to benefit city of Orlando residents um, within these Orlando city limits. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, our grant criteria, and this is what our reviewers will use to evaluate your application. We do provide a rubric for them um, to evaluate each proposal so that we can make sure every reviewer is looking at each application consistently and using the same type of tools to review them um, so that it's fair. Um, and so we wanna make sure your program will make a significant impact to address the identified focus area or community need, um, that your program is comprehensive and available to all affected city of Orlando residents. Um, so for example, if you were to say, I only wanna do this program in, the, in this um, housing complex, or we're only doing this program to serve Orlando Housing Authority residents, then we would probably not fund that program because we want to make sure that these are programs that are available to any city of Orlando residents should they need them. Um, you want to make sure that you have are able to demonstrate effective service and management capabilities. So we are looking at your, um, your leadership. We're looking at your board. Um, we're looking at some of your track record. Uh, as an organization, and we'll get into that a little bit further um, in our talk. We also want to make sure that your organization has demonstrated good fiscal strength and fiscal management. Um, and so we are looking at your nonprofit portraits that you'll be completing um, to meet, looking at those three year averages, uh, making sure that we're making a sound um, investment when we award our grants. We want to make sure that you successfully leverage the city of Orlando funding to engage diverse funding streams in support of the program. And really what we're looking is we don't want to be the only funders for your program. So when you're filling out that budget and you have opportunities to demonstrate who your partners are or where other revenue streams are coming from, um, that's a wonderful opportunity to really um, solidly, you know, describe and highlight your various um, partnerships. The nonprofit organization or program, we wanna make sure that you have a substantial presence in the Orlando community. So again, we're looking to make sure that you have been in operation and providing services for at least 12 months, that you have embedded yourself um, somewhat into the community at least. Um, and that you demonstrate extensive community partnerships and coalitions. One of the things, um, is that sometimes we see nonprofits that really are operating as a silo. And, you know, there's no way a non one nonprofit organization can meet every need um, of their clients. And so it's important to have those partnerships and collaborations and relationships with other nonprofit organizations, with businesses and that sort of thing that can support you um, so that you can accomplish your mission and make that impact. Um, so we do want to see what community partnerships you have in place. And again, um, we want to make sure you're collaborating with businesses and social service organizations to improve your service delivery and create a measurable impact. So it all kind of goes together. Step three um, is to create a nonprofit profile in Central Florida Foundation's nonprofit search. Uh, we do want to make sure that you have a reviewed portrait um, and we ask that you have that submitted by March 11th. So um, we are literally 30 days out from that. So um, what I want you to do is um, 
click on this link. This will take you to Nonprofit Search. And I'm going to hand this over to Sandy Vidal at the Central Florida Foundation, who is going to describe this um, process a little bit further for you. And is everybody able to see Nonprofit Search in the front of their screen? OK. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Julie. Sandy, I will scroll um, for you because I don't know that I can. Let me share. I'll try to give you some, <laughs> some access. Yeah, if, if you're able to let me share screen, that would be great. If not, I think you have to stop sharing. Mm -hmm. You can scroll for me. So um, just type in, up. Oh, you may be able to do it. Yay, let's see. There we go. Every, everyone should be looking at my screen now. So um, for those of you that I don't know, and I think I know a lot of you, um, I'm Sandy Vidal. I'm the Vice President of Community Strategies and Initiatives over at the Central Florida Foundation. And Maria Bryant is also on the call. She's our new Community Investment Manager. And Alyssa Mahadeo is the contact when it comes to nonprofit search but she is off today, so you don't get the pleasure of meeting her if you haven't already. But we're here to serve you and help you through this process and make sure that you can have a profile that not only the city will love, but other funders in the community, including our own. So I wanna start with just telling you it's nonprofits-search.org. And as Julie showed you, you can access it directly from the city website. You can look for organizations here. You can also create a profile. And then there's some tools that are available to you as well. So we'll start with looking at the Central Florida Foundation as the example nonprofit. And I'll just search for it. You can search by categories, keywords, all sorts of fun things, but we're here. What you'll see on, on the visible side to the community is this, and then I'll show you the inside. Mine looks a little bit different than yours will, but I'll still let you see the inside so that if you do have questions about it, um, we'll be able to, to answer those. But each one of these areas is filled out. The, um, this area over here has live links to your social media, your website, but what you're really looking for is you want to have this reviewed symbol right here. It doesn't mean we think your nonprofit search profile is great. Hopefully we do, and we'll give you feedback along the way. But what it does mean is that we have looked and verified that you have everything you say you have and that um, all of it is checked off as far as what you say you have. So if you say you have director's insurance, we're going to ask you to upload the director's insurance so that we can see it. The general public is not gonna get a copy of your director's insurance, so you don't have to worry about that. When it comes to things like policies and procedures, strategic plans, we ask you to give us a copy of it, but all we're doing is verifying that you have it. We're not, again, making that piece of it public because that's your plan and it's not there for everybody else to see. Oh, I could spell, we'd be in good shape. So the technology is not cooperating. So what you'll see basically when you get to the inside of the profile is that um, you won't have all of these buttons, but you'll have a submit button or save buttons on different things. If you have a save button, it saves automatically. And once your profile is updated and live, all those changes are made right away. And you don't have to worry about it getting submitted to us. The things that say submit are gonna to come to us for review before they become live. So you'll have these tabs on the left-hand side and these will take you to each one of the sections. You wanna make sure that the user 
here are reflective of your organization and who you want working on your profile. If you have any that are no longer with your organization, just hit the inactive button and we can inactivate any of those users. There's gonna be a button on each page that says edit profile. If you can't get it to save, it means you've missed a, a spot with a little red asterisk, which is a mandatory field. And generally a little red box will pop up that will tell you what it is that you've missed. But you wanna go through and fill out each area of this um, and you'll see the red boxes. We encourage you to fill out the boxes that are not red too, just so that you can have a robust amount of information. We're looking at who are the population that you serve. So if you have special populations that you're serving, like if you're ser serving LGBTQ individuals or you're serving veterans, you wanna go ahead and check those boxes as well because it'll help people in searching for you. All of the ethnicities that you serve, if you serve um, adults, just general, make sure that your office contacts are here and an email that we can get in touch with you at. This is really important here where it says social media, make sure that you're using the format that's on the top. So for Twitter, you wanna make sure that you're getting the HTTPS twitter.com in front of it. If you just put like at Sandy Vidal on there, it's not gonna show up on the other side as a live link. So it's really important that you put the whole link in. And then once you get down to the bottom of the page, you can hit save. Other place a lot of people miss is in statements. There's a few different areas and you won't see them if you don't hit edit statements and search criteria. So you wanna be able to make sure that you go through each section. And you don't have to put a lot, like our mission statement is just building community by building philanthropy. So we don't need an explanation of the mission statement, just that mission statement in there. The other thing is in your needs section, and this is good for the foundation and also good for others. Um, if you have specific needs that have amounts attached to them, like I need a van and it's gonna be $10,000. Tell us that you need a van, it's $10,000 and what you're gonna use it for. And then the, the things people miss the most or skip the most are things like theory of change. There's a little pop-up with the question mark that will tell you exactly what that section does. And so the theory of change in this particular case is what you believe. If you believe that by doing X, Y will happen. So I believe if I feed all hungry people, there'll be no hunger. That would be your theory of change. And then any statements from board presidents, if you have any kind of independent research, your CEO is always welcome to put comments on any page. If there's anything that you feel like you want to explain, like for example, if you brought in $10 million last year and $2 million this year, you might want to explain that you had a campaign last year or you had a planned gift last year or whatever happened to make that discrepancy uh, there. And then looking at your organization type in here, your geographic area, one of the ways that we find you to actually even invite you to this process is when you click Orlando, that helps you to come up in a search that we do internally to be able to share with, uh, with the city of Orlando. And then all of your keywords would be here. And I know I'm going pretty fast, so if anybody has any questions, I'll pause at the end. Impact information, what you're doing here is really looking at almost a one-page strategy. So you're looking at what are your goals as an organization? What are the strategies you're going to use to get there? Are you capable? How will you know if you're going in the right direction? And then are you making progress towards that milestone you're trying to hit? So for example, if I wanted to buy a house, that goal might be to buy a house. The strategies might be to make sure that my credit is good, that I have a down payment, and that I kind of have an idea of where I want to live, maybe get a real estate agent. The capabilities would be, do I have good credit? Do I have money for a down payment? Do I have the ability to pay back a mortgage if I get a house? And then the indicators would be, okay, I've got my real estate agent, I'm starting to look at listings, we're going to open houses. So it shows that I'm going in the right direction to be able to get a house and then progress would be, 
I made an offer and they've accepted, yay. Programs, uh, this is another area that people uh, often leave things blank. So just make sure that you're hitting your vet beneficiaries in your program categories. And you can look at your programs by just hitting the magnifying glass. And then any kind of evidence of program success is also really good to have any stories. That's a great place to put it. If your program is a disaster program, there's an opportunity to check yes, and that will automatically populate the disaster programs. For governance, what you do is sh share with us how many times your board meets. Your board attendance percentage comes from your board attendance spreadsheet which is in the tools and resources within the, the profile. Your board ethnicity, uh, we look at the breakdown of that. Oftentimes funders will look at the breakdown of your board because they wanna know, do you have diversity on your board? And if not, um, I, and I think that's actually a question in the application, wanna know your plan to become more diverse. Have insurance. The other area is to add your DNO insurance, which I see that we have not done. So bad foundation. I'm gonna make sure that our CFO knows that she needs to add that. Is your board contributing to the um, overall budget of your organization? Are they doing in kind? Is there anything else that's unique about your board? So for example, if you're a disability organization, you may require that people have a disability or a certain percentage of your board has one. Then you have written board selection criteria. Do you have a conflict of interest policy? And then in here you have governance details. Another thing that people often ask is for board chair, you can't change your chair without removing your chair. So if you're updating your chair, just hit remove chair. Once you remove chair, then there'll be a little spot to but board chair. And then here you'll have your attendance percentage and that's what populates that front um, percentage area. And then if you have any kind of advisory boards, any committees, any type of risk management procedures or insurance, you can outline those there. Management, uh, this is a voluntary area, but it's not really voluntary. We want you to fill it out but it's not required to get the profile up, but we do encourage you to get it up as quickly as possible. Put your CEO, the salaries of your CEO does not show on the public side, but just know that your CEO salaries do show on your 990. And then your staff counts, your staff demographics. Do you have a strategic plan, succession planning? Those types of plans, you'll add each one of those and then evaluations at the end have any kind of awards, this is a good place to just showcase those. You're not required to put them, but if you have them, we'd love to know about them. And then here you can add any kind of multimedia. So on the front page of your profile, you can put videos, you can put pictures, and all you have to do is hit the add multimedia entry and it'll tell you what type of multimedia you can add. If you have events or volunteer opportunities, you can add those that's new. If you want to have your um, board members or others run a campaign for you, you can add campaigns and all of your documents are stored in this section here. Again, I've gone through it pretty quickly. Your financials, this area here, um, current financials, you cannot reset them by yourself. We have to reset them for you. So just shoot us an email if your finan current financials are out of date and you need them reset. And then this will show all of your previous fiscal years, your 990. Most people at least have their 2020 990. If you have your 2021 990, add that too. And then an audit. If you don't have an audit and you don't have a 990 or you have a 990 and it's a postcard, we ask you to upload in other documents your profit and loss statement in your budget so that we can at least see where you stand as an organization. And then your state charitable solicitations permit, this is not the tax receipt that you take to the store when you go to buy things for tax exemption. This is from the Department of Agriculture and it'll have a big Department of Agriculture sign on it. 
And that'll tell you that you are able to solicit donations in the state of Florida. There are some people like the library and others that are exempt from this, but uh, most organizations, if you bring in $25,000 or more in a year, need to file for this. If you haven't filed for it, um, let us know and we can provide a link for you. I think there's also a link in nonprofit search to do that. That's my uh, quick overview of nonprofit search and I'll turn it back to Julie, but I'm here if you have any questions and more than happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Sandy. Does anyone have any questions before we move on? Okay, very good. Uh, so what we're gonna do is Continue moving on. Sorry. Here. Your screen. Um, so here's, yes, so we're going back to nonprofit search. Um, step four, again, is the QA session. Thank you for joining us today. Um, after day, today, probably sometime next week, we'll be linking today's recording um, so that if you want to go back and listen to our Q&A session today, you can do that. And then we ask that you submit your application by um, Friday, March 25th, 2022. Um, that is an 11.59 PM deadline. And um, so the biggest thing with that is just to make sure that you're completing the application in its entirety as directed, um, and that your applications are clear and concise uh, when you're describing your programs and services. Um, our reviewers are made up of past grant recipients, community leaders, um, subject matter experts, academia. Um, and so most of them are familiar with a lot of the programs that you're describing, um, familiar with your nonprofit, um, but you still wanna make sure that you're providing some very clear um, descriptions um, for your programs and outcomes and so forth. And then we just have a little bit of information as far as once you submit your application, um, we only allow one application per eligible organization during the open grant period. Um, it is a competitive grant process. So if you were funded one year, you are not automatically assured of receiving future funding. Um, the grant term begins January 1st, 2023 and runs through December 31st, 2023. So I know this is a long grant process um, if you're submitting your application in March. Um, what happens is we review those applications in April and May. In June, we begin making some funding recommendations to our budget office. During the summer is when the city of Orlando begins crafting its next year's budget. Um, and so those numbers kind of roll into that budget planning process. It goes for approval with city council in September, um, and then we take it to city council for approval in October. Um, between October and December, we're building your contracts and getting those signed, and then you can start January 1st. So I know it's a long process, but it's where we're at. So, um, and let's see, we um, are sometimes unable to fund every request. I think last year we had over $6 million in requests. We only had about $2.4 million to award. So we have to we're forced to make some very difficult, heartbreaking decisions sometimes and in, in where the money is distributed um, and invested. Um, and at times we will award partial funding um, to your request. Any questions before we move to the application? It's a quiet group today. Okay. Oh, I timed out. Hold on just a moment. So this is the Zoom Grants portal. Um, when you are in the application and you click to apply, it'll take you to Zoom Grants here. If you are a new organization and you've never received funding from the city of Orlando, you can create a new Zoom Grants account here on the right. If an account has already been created from your organization, don't open a new account. We wanna keep all that information, historical information together. Um, so if you do not have the credentials to log in, um, you wanna locate um, who 
opened the account for your organization, or you can reach out to me and I'll let you know who the owner is. Uh, you wanna make sure you get those credentials. That individual can also um, assign you as a collaborator on the account so that you can go in and make changes, contribute to the application, um, quarterly reports, and that sort of thing. Um, so when you see the open programs, you see our community investment program here, and you'll click on apply. I was locked in. using my old password, so sorry. We're in. Um, so you'll see the community investment program here. And let's see, this is actually, I'm gonna sign out. I was hoping that the 2223 would be here and it's not. Does anybody have, I'm just gonna log in as myself. You'll be able to see the back end of Zoom grants, <laughs> but we'll get you in there. Okay. Um, so in the Zoom grants, when you get to your application, um, let's see, I'm going to program set up. We'll just look at the questions here. Give it a second to load. All right, so you should see apply now, start application on the screen. And the first tab that you'll go to is your summary. And this is where you'll provide your application title, project name, the amount you're requesting from the city of Orlando, information about you as the applicant, as the organization, and you'll also provide information about your CEO or executive director. Um, if you need to add any addresses, sometimes you may have a different legal address and mailing address, so you can add um, addresses here. Uh, what I do love about the Zoom program is as you enter information into the spaces, as you click out of it, it automatically saves. So you don't have to worry about the system timing out and losing information. Just make sure you click out of the box and it will save it for you. Okay. Your next tab, not making any changes, is your application form. Just a second. Our internet's running a little slow today. Okay, when you go to your application questions, you'll provide the name again of your program or project. You'll provide the link to your nonprofit search that Sandy described. And then you'll select one of the focus areas that best align with your program services. Um, based on this response, it will remove some of these questions down below. So it will um, automatically highlight and um, the specific questions that you'll be answering based on your focus area. Um, your first question is your program summary, um, and this is just a very brief summary of your proposed program. This is what we use for marketing, for um, putting together, you know, program descriptions of the various projects that have been funded. Um, so we just ask, you can see here there's um, only 250 characters, um, but just one sentence. Um, and so I kind of give you a format here. Um, it should include the name of your organization, the objectives, how you're approaching um, solving the problem and then what the impact or result will be. So I gave you an example statement here. Um, you just kind of want to format and um, 
your summary um, very succinctly, clearly um, in that section. And then I give you a program description section and that's 4,000 characters. So that's really where you get down into providing a description of your proposed activities, services, scope of work, why you believe this will be effective. So this is a more in-depth description of what your program looks like. Your need statement, I know you're familiar with this, explaining the local need for this program. Does your program solve a problem, address an immediate need or both? Describe how this program is an innovative response to the identified need in your community and include a description of how your organization addresses the needs of the most vulnerable populations. So we're looking at children, elderly, um, low income, etc. We want an idea of how many City of Orlando residents you plan to serve with the grant. Your organizations. Um, and how your organization honors diversity, understands the core needs of your target audience, and designs services and materials to strategically meet those needs. How your organization ensures it's decreasing barriers to access. Your organization's efforts in coordinating services for individuals who might be served by multiple agencies. So again, if you're having, um, if you're working with individuals that are working with your partners or are receiving services from multiple agencies. Um, provide some examples of how these collaborations enable you to meet the needs of the individuals you serve. Again, we wanna look at capacity. So provide the qualifications of up to three people who have a primary responsibility for implementing the program. That can just be a few statements about their um, experience um, in education. We are gonna go back a little bit about COVID and just provide a brief description of how you provided services during COVID, how these, you know, how they were provided if they were held in person or delivered virtually. Um, if this is a new program and you were in operation during COVID, you can just select or enter in A. Also, um, we acknowledge that each organization is in different stages of stages of addressing inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. So just explain what your efforts are, um, what your plan is to make, um, to address these um, issues in your organization. Next, we'll get into the financial position. Um, and that is how funder support is key to the success of the program. What other funding or programmatic partners are included in your application and how you pl plan to sustain the program beyond the grant year. Evaluation um, is basically what does success look like at the end of your grant period? Provide a clear plan of how you're evaluating the results of the program in relation to goals and activities um, stated in your program summary. So you're gonna bring that back as far as how you're monitoring and measuring success for your program. If you've spent time with me, you know that we are looking at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and making sure that our funding aligns with meeting those goals um, by the year 2030. Um, and so what we ask is that you will check all um, goals that apply. If you need additional information about the UN Sustainable Goals, you can follow this link um, to provide more information. And then just let us know which Request, um, that which SDG your grant request most aligns with. Um, so some of them can be multiple, but which one do you feel is the, the most um, descriptive um, or aligns the closest with your program? These are the questions that are going to um, highlight on their own. We ran out of paragraph questions for this application cycle. Um, but as you scroll down, depending on what focus area you chose, um, you will have some additional questions to answer that are specific to that focus area. Um, and so you'll see they're um, A, B, C, D um, divided. Um, and we give you space here. Um, just make sure I would recommend providing maybe a paragraph for each item. Um, just so that our reviewers can find your answers, you know, in your um, response. So if they're looking specifically for the answer to question D, they're not trying to find it in a gigantic paragraph. You know, they can go down and find D in your answer. Um, 
so that it's it's easily laid out um, so they're able to find that information. Okay, so we have, like I said, additional questions for each focus area. These, like I said, depending on your on which area you choose, will gray out so you're, it won't even be an option to answer questions that are not within your focus area. Um, you'll provide the name of the individual completing the application, their title, email address, and phone number. Um, so those are the main questions. You'll see a lot of the questions about your board, a lot of questions about your finances and your everything else we find in your nonprofit portrait. So you don't have to duplicate those answers um, within the application. The budget tab is where you will provide a description of your funding sources and revenue. So you will include the amount that you're requesting from the city of Orlando. You'll provide any other cash received or pledged, any other anticipated sources of remaining funds. So maybe you have some, some other grants out that you're waiting for a response on. Maybe you've sent some letters for support. Maybe you have a fundraiser coming up and you're intending to use the, the funds to support the program. Just let us know that. And then anything else, any other sources of revenue. Down below, there is a budget narrative. And this is where you can really get in to describing um, some of these items that are listed above here. Your expenses have some specific line items. You won't be able to add to that, but we do have other expenses not listed above. And again, we do ask for a budget narrative for these items. A lot of times if I see supplies and equipment for $6,000, I wanna know exactly what we're purchasing or what we're investing in. So, so really try to give us a little bit of a budget narrative down below um, of how you arrived at that amount um, in the expense category um, and what makes up your supplies and equipment. Um, if this is um, in this portion of the budget for expenses, um, we want to know what, which items the city of Orlando or how much the city of of Orlando is supporting in each of these line items and how much is being supported by other funding sources. So if other sources are supporting your administrative or overhead costs and et cetera, or if you know, you're splitting the cost of technology between the city grant and another program, you can divide the cost um, between the two. But we kind of want to know um, in the amount you're requesting from the city of Orlando, how much um, you know, where is that being distributed in your budget? And then the remaining costs of the program should be listed here. Does that make sense? So when we add these two together, we should see the total cost of the project. Any questions about that? Okay. Our next tab is our Julie? project. Of, yes. This is Kyle. I don't want to belabor everything. I, may I have a sidebar conversation with you about the categories um, in the budget based on feedback I got from my finance person? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. OK, we'll do that. OK. Excuse me. Not a problem. Um, your project effects form is basically a snapshot of your before and after. We wanna see what the impact of this grant is on your organization. So if there's gonna be any changes to your organization's size, em employees, whether full-time or part-time employees or structure, you would let us know kind of what is it at this point? And then after the grant, how would that change? Um, if there are no changes, you would just write an A in these areas. Um, if there's any effect on your organization's programs, operating expenses, ability to generate income, or effect on the issue or need the project addresses, you would give that information here. Up above, um, you'll see in the library at the top, we do have a sample of that form. Um, I don't know if it's opening. Is it opening up on your screen? You want to see that? I don't oh. think it is because it's a Word document. Um, let me see, I'm gonna do a quick, quick screen share on that. Okay, um, so this is just a sample of that, but you see where they added a person. Instead of serving 30 individuals a month, the grant allowed them to expand that additional person to serve 60 individuals a month, 
or you know there was an effect on the organization's operating expenses because they had 24,000 now they have 36 budgeted you know so just kind of give us an idea um, I don't need a great amount of explanation here I always think that you know the less is better because we really just want that quick review um, to see um, where um, the dollars are making the impact within your organization. Okay. We should be back to the application page. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. Some people have their their cameras off, so I can't see faces. Maria, are you seeing the application page? Okay, thank you. Um, the last tab that you're gonna look at, these are all for the application, this is down below, is for um, if the grant is awarded. So you just wanna look at these five tabs here, is your documents. Um, so we will be collecting some additional documentation from you, uh, your most recent board approved um, statement, financial statement or balance sheet a copy of your organization's prior um, fiscal year budget, including revenue expenses, um, your current fiscal year budget, including revenue expenses, a copy of your IRS determin um, determination letter of your 501c3 tax exempt status, a completed W-9 form. Um, if you have an annual report, um, you can include that here, as well as your copy of your organization's diversity, equity, and inclusion plan, if available. Um, so you will upload those documents as well. Um, and that is the application. Any questions? Hey, Julie. Yes, ma'am. Catherine Zimmerman here. Hi, friend. How are Hi. you? Hi. Is um, with the admin and oversight for the city of Orlando, is there a maximum amount that you would consider for us to include in our request? I would say make it reasonable. You know, we really want this to go direct services um, as much as possible. Right. Well, we know you need staff to do that. Um, and so I would say as long as it's, you know, reasonable and it fits as aligns with the program that you're proposing, um, yeah, we just tell you to ask what you need. Great. Okay. But if and we get Bob, a proposal that is all salaries, then that would be a, a hard no. <laughs> okay, great. And while I have you, and just so everybody will know, if an agency that is located outside of the city uh, provides virtual services for clients where they don't have to leave their their home or the library or whatever would they be eligible to apply if they fit in the focus areas like i said we do want to make sure that you have a strong presence in our okay. community so um you know that would all depend on kind of where you know exactly what that program looks like that's a really hard question to ask unless I knew more about the program but we do want it your organization to have a strong presence in the community so as long as they can demonstrate that um you know that's what we would be looking at okay and and really with you know co coronavirus it used to be everyone had to go to these you know outside but uh, mm -hmm. a lot of agencies are now there they may not have any physical offices in the city limits but they are providing direct services and doing that for people virtually in their homes so they don't have to leave mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thanks absolutely and just to clarify that as well the organization's legal address um, mailing address does not have to be within the orlando city limits but we do want to make sure that you're providing services within the city limits to Orlando residents. So, you know, if they're having to drive, even though you say, oh, we're only gonna serve Orlando residents, but they need to come visit us in Kissimmee, that's really not accessible. That's not, um, right. you know, what we're looking at. Um, and so if you're partnering with an organization and you're able to provide those services within Orlando city limits, say, you know, four days a week or something like that, then that would make that program eligible. Um, again, we're looking at accessibility um, for our residents. I don't want them to have to take a bus for three hours to get to you in Kissimmee. So, um, so you know, we're, we're definitely paying attention to that. Okay. 
Kyle, is your hand still up or is that a new question? Sorry. I, That's no okay. Question. Okay. Sorry about that. Not a problem. Any other questions? Julie Shanika Law has a question um, from yes. the chat box. Mm. She says, is there floor and ceiling for funding amounts requested? Very good question, Shaniqua. Um, I would, I always tell folks, let us know what you need. Um, we, this is a program that has very wide range of awards. Um, and so we are looking at, when we're evaluating proposals, we're looking at the strength of the proposal. Uh, we're looking at our reviewers response as far as, you know, what the impact is going to be in our community. Um, and so, yeah, I just say, you know, ask what you need. Um, we can either, you know, talk to you about either, you know, what we can fund and what we can move going forward. Uh, we may be able to fully fund it. You know, it just really depends on um, what it is you're proposing to do and the impact that it's going to make. So I know I didn't really answer your question, did I? Uh, but we do. If you look at our, our funding, we have some programs that are 25,000. We have other programs that are 200,000. So it just really, there's a really wide range um, of awards, um, depending on the scope and impact of those programs. Any other questions? a great opportunity to, to get clarification on any questions um, and so forth. I have another question. Please ask away. <laughs> Are the funds on a reimbursement basis or is, is the grant award an immediate award that comes at the end of the year, the beginning of the grant period? Very good question. Um, we disperse grant funds on a quarterly basis. Um, so you'll receive four quarterly payments um, of your grant award. And that is um, dependent on, you know, the quality, you know, your reporting. And uh, we monitor to make sure that the program is doing what they said they would do, that they're able to um, provide those services to our residents. Great, thanks. Is the first payment at the end of the first quarter or at the beginning? Nope, it's of at the, the beginning. Great, okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, this year we actually have our payments have been going out in January, February because there was, um, you know, because of the holidays and that sort of thing. But we try to get them out as early as we can at the beginning, that first quarterly report or first quarterly payment at the beginning of the quarter. Okay, we are right up on our hour. Um, and so I just want to thank all of you for um, joining us this afternoon um, for your wonderful questions. I really look forward to seeing your proposals in a little over a month. Um, know that I'm available to, again, like I said, to answer any questions, provide that technical assistance. Um, because we have such a wonderful um, review panel really providing, you know, recommendations for funding. Um, that frees me up to provide a lot of technical assistance for you. Um, and I'll, I'll back up. Our reviewers don't recommend funding, but they do recommend that your application is considered for funding. Um, and so um, it gives me the, you know, kind of frees me up, like I said, to provide that technical assistance and advisement. Um, so along the way, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And thank you for all the work that you do to bring money into our Central Florida community. All right, everyone have a wonderful weekend. And we'll talk soon. Take care, Julie. Thank you. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Bye-bye. Thanks, Julie. My pleasure.